An abandoned woman who's afraid to leave her house puts her fate in the hands of strangers who come knocking at her door. An agoraphobic woman named Seconda dances animatedly at home until her jumping causes something to fall from a shelf. She takes a break and hisses at her cat, Minu, for fun. Being agoraphobic, she feels anxiety leaving her home. After a moment, she cleans the mess up and contemplates on disposing of her medications. She soon decides to throw it out the window before laying in the bed. Later, she hears someone arriving, so Seconda wordly checks outside her bedroom door and is relieved when she confirms that it's just her mother. She soon joins her in the living room as Dominique cooks. Her father, Augusto, walks in, looking for Minou to feed it. Seconda comments that the cat can starve, making Augusto worry why his daughter doesn't care for it. The phone rings and Augusto goes to answer it with Seconda following him. As soon as he picks it up, he mutters that they hung up, so Seconda returns to the living room. With her away, Augusto uses this opportunity to cut the telephone line. Later, her father announces that he's heading out. Dominique comments that he should have bathed, but her husband dismisses it. Seconda mutters that her sister would have hated this banter, but her mother insisted that Juliet would take her side. This upsets Seconda, so her mother suggests she should go out with her father. Augusto protests, arguing that she hasn't left the house in nine months. To release anxiety, Seconda dances, making her mother question if she took her medicine. Feeling cornered, the daughter storms off to the bathroom, saying she'll go. However, when Augusto checks on her, she just tells him to buy eggs. The man sighs and arranges a few things on the shelf before going. On his way out, he sees her medication on the street and pockets it. In the bathroom, Seconda excessively grooms herself, then goes to the living room to find her mother asleep on a chair. She grabs the hooded jumpsuit on the table and wears it, then proceeds to dance to relieve anxiety. She then tells her mother to go to her room to sleep. But when she nudges her, she discovers that Dominique has passed away, making her panic. After a long while, Seconda broods in her room as she puts holes on a picture of herself. Her father knocks, asking if she's hungry, but she declines and sticks the whole riddled picture in front of a lamp and curls herself to sleep. However, she can't sleep, so she heads to the living room where Augusto is blankly watching TV. The man hides her medicine as she approaches. Seconda asks if he's sad, admitting that she misses her mother. When he doesn't respond, the daughter merely places her head on his lap where she finally gets some sleep. The next morning, she wakes up on the couch wondering where her father is. She goes to get some water in the kitchen, and only then does she see a note from Augusto, saying he left. This shocks her, so Seconda reels and sits down, spotting the a pile of cat food on Minou's bowl that her father left. She scrambles to the phone and reconnects the line. She keeps picking the phone up, hoping for her father to call. Unable to care for herself, she eats nothing but bread, and at night, she keeps checking if Augusto or anyone has returned. One day, the phone rings, so Seconda races to it thinking it's her father. However, it's only someone looking for Augusto. Not wanting to miss a call from Augusto, she sets up an answering machine and records herself saying that if her father comes back, she promises to leave the house. She takes the first steps to doing so by opening the window. However, as soon as a girl glances at her, she closes it shut in fear. The next day, she wakes up to her phone ringing. She waits for the answering machine to record a message, only to hear a man saying she inherited Augusto's debts. Because of this, Seconda checks their banking statements, unaware that her father had debts. Adding to her stress, the debt collector calls again later, insisting that he'll find a way to make her talk to him. In the evening, Seconda passes the time by putting faces on egg crates, all while the debt collector keeps calling, now resorting to insults. After another day, Seconda checks the fridge and sees that she's out of food. Without hesitation, she picks up the cat's food and snacks on it while still listening to the debt collector's insulting calls. Just then, Minou approaches to ask for food, so she spits out a piece of it. In the hopes of working up the courage to deal with her life, Seconda tries to work out. When she feels unmotivated, she turns on the answering machine and uses the debt collector's insults as motivation to go all out on the stationary bike. With it being her only connection to the outside world, she even uses the awful messages as background noise to keep her company before she enjoys a bit of satisfaction using the vibrating bed. One night, she pranks a group of kids doing a tour by throwing things at them, causing them to run away in panic. 
The chaos makes her chuckle until one of them, the Scout, discovers her and throws things in revenge. This becomes Secunda's first interaction with the outside world. The next day, the calls stop, so she listens through each voicemail until she hears the debt collector's number. She tries to call him to hear the man's voice, only to find that the line is no longer in service. Distraught that her means of hearing another human is gone, she slams the phone on the floor. Later, she drinks water with sugar when Minu starts begging for food, having been left unfed for a while. Secunda realizes that she must feed it, so she looks for her medicine in her room to help relieve some anxiety. She scrambles through her drawer but to no avail. With no choice, she grabs some money and prepares to leave. However, upon seeing the vastness of the outside world, Secunda gets scared and slams the door shut. Desperate and hungry, she heads to the basement where luckily, she finds a few cans of crushed tomatoes. She eats them heartily, only to get sick since they've gone bad. With nothing to eat and unable to go out, she breaks down. With no more options, she spitefully throws the cans at people outside and shuts the windows. When this doesn't help her mood, she resorts to grabbing a bow and arrow to use on herself. However, the arrow misses her neck and hits Minu instead. She remorselessly wraps the cat in a bag and throws it out the window. She tries other ways to end things, but can't bear the pain. When she makes another attempt in the living room, the doorbell ringing interrupts her. The woman races to the door and opens it, revealing a man named Santo. Before he can say anything, Secunda drags him inside and demands to know what he wants. Santo explains that he's here to pick up the bottles Dominique leaves behind. Secunda runs to the kitchen to get water, and while she's gone, the man notices the mess in her home. When she returns, Secunda reveals that her mother passed away. Santo tries to offer his sympathies, but the woman unapologetically asks him to end her life. She suggests a few things, but asks him to be determined because she has a strong survival instinct. She even offers to give him the house in exchange. Shocked, Santo pulls back, so Secunda hugs him tightly to keep him from leaving. Eventually, the man relents and agrees to her outrageous request. He tells her to wait while he gets something, but this is only an excuse for him to leave. Still, Secunda dresses up and puts on makeup while waiting for Santo. However, as night falls, there's still no sign of the man. The next morning, she waits by the stairs. Sure enough, someone rings the doorbell, but once she opens it, she meets Henry, the debt collector. Recognizing his voice, she scolds him for not calling, saying it was rude. Taken aback, Henry reasons that it's better to talk in person regarding her family's debt, but seeing how attractive she is, the man's anger falters. He asks her out for a short walk and ice cream, but the woman rejects him saying she can't leave the house. She then tells him she's busy and closes the door. Confused, Henry leaves, only for the scout to pelt him with rocks thinking he was the one throwing things at them the other night. As Secunda continues waiting for Santo's return, Henry starts calling her again but instead of insults, he flirts with her, waxing on about her beauty and how he desires her. This disgusts her, prompting her to wash her makeup off. Later, she waits on the bed only to hear her window shatter. She opens the door to find the scout below. She threatens her, but the kid knows she can't even leave the house. The scout saunters off and calls her crazy. Anger apparently empowers Secunda, so she suits up and through pure spite, barges out the door. She walks stiffly through the streets, trying to hold herself together. Soon, two ladies recognize her, so she approaches them and asks where Santo lives. She arrives in his apartment and sneaks inside. Hearing the man in the shower, Secunda heads inside and pulls the curtains. This spooks Santo who slips and gets knocked out. With him out, Secunda then stalks a delivery man to get his keys. Ultimately, she steals his delivery motorcycle to bring the unconscious Santo to her home. She carries the man up to the bedroom and tries talking to him. With the man still unconscious, she shares how she had an older sister named Juliet who passed away when she was five. Santo still doesn't wake up, so the woman heads downstairs and roars in frustration. She works up the courage to go to the groceries to get eggs. As she does, she hears Augusto's laugh and finds him joking around with another woman. Upon noticing his daughter, the man pulls his companion to leave, not even looking at Secunda as they pass her by. The abandoned daughter can only sob as her father leaves. However, she gathers herself and lets her anger win. She rushes to the cashier's line and bites Augusto's mistress on the arm before slinking away with everything she grabbed earlier. Later, the woman complains to Augusto about the event, though the man dismisses it, not wanting to share his past with her. While they talk, however, they suddenly get hit by eggs. Augusto turns to see Secunda hiding up a tree and throwing more eggs at them. Still furious, she stiffly walks home. 
only to see the scout sitting by a dumpster and caring for her cat who apparently survived. She eyes the woman hatefully, which Seconda ignores. As evening comes, Seconda sheds her clothes at home and lays beside Santo who's still unconscious. The next morning, Henry visits with a bouquet of flowers, but nobody answers the door so he goes inside. This wakes Seconda up, only to find that Santo is gone from her bed. She checks the bathroom if he'd gone there but finds the room empty. Meanwhile, Henry looks for Seconda inside the house and places his bouquet in a vase. He then opens a door to find the woman, only for Santo to meet him with a punch thinking he's his kidnapper. This knocks Henry out. Seconda hears the commotion and finds Henry sprawled on the floor. Santo quietly admits he thought he was her and checks on the man. He orders her to help take Henry to the hospital, and Seconda initially hesitates before getting ready. However, she insists that she's not getting out of the car. With Henry in the trunk, Seconda and Santo drive him to the hospital. The car lists as she drives, and when she turns to the woods, only then does she ask if she's going the right direction. Horrified, Santo asks if she even knows where the hospital is, only to hear Henry cuss from inside the trunk. Seconda smiles, hearing his familiar scathing banter, but he suddenly stops talking. This alarms Santo, so he demands Seconda to turn around because he thinks Henry will definitely hurt them. When she doesn't listen, he grabs the wheel, so Seconda stops the car and scolds him. Pissed, the man yells that her father left her since she's crazy. This makes the woman pause, asking why he knows. So the man reveals that everyone knows what happened to her family. She then demands to know why he even came to her house back then. So he confesses that he was supposed to rob her but was freaked out when she dragged him inside. Santo then bolts off, just as Henry starts cussing once more. Seconda attempts to run after the man, but stops and sits back in the car. Seeing this, Santo goes back for Seconda, warning her that Henry will just kill her. The woman resists as he pulls her out, so he carries her instead and drags her into the woods. Now surrounded by nature, the woman is struck with awe. Meanwhile, Henry manages to get out and wanders, only to collapse out of exhaustion. Somewhere in the forest, Santo approaches Seconda who's curled up and humming to herself. Pitying her, he assures her that Juliet would have loved having her as a sister, which surprises her. So he admits that he was conscious back then but was pretending since he was afraid of her. This somehow overjoys Seconda, so she initiates intimacy with him. After the deed, Seconda shares about the time she hid inside the henhouse of a boy she liked. When the neighbors found out, they called social welfare who reprimanded her for not understanding what proper affection was. Later, the couple sit by a brook where Santo uses mud to draw number two on her suit. Given that it's also her name. Elated, Seconda starts running to the forest not anymore struck with agoraphobia. She feels so light that in her mind, she floats and finds herself in a room filled with all the ways she tried to cope with her condition. When she leaves, the flowers in the vase burst into flames as she realizes that she still doesn't know what love means. Seconda tries to shed her jumpsuit, but somehow there's more suits under it no matter how many times she removes it. Ultimately, her momentary happiness didn't make her condition disappear. She wakes up back in the forest with a scout throwing rocks at her again. When the woman wakes up, she bolts off. Finding herself alone, Seconda is maddened, thinking that her experience with Santo might have been a hallucination. Her anxiety returns and she runs with all her might, slamming herself into the wall of an empty pool. Seconda soon finds herself in a mental facility. A doctor asks her if she wants to inform anyone of her stay here, but she says no. During her stay, she looks cautiously outside but refuses to go out. Sometime later, her father visits. He tells her that he paid the debts and that the house is hers to either use or sell. He offers to let her back home and live with him, but the woman remains quiet. Augusto uses this opportunity to tell Seconda that they blame themselves for her condition. They mourned Juliet, and when Seconda was born, she was their second chance, so they sheltered her as much as they could. This infuriated Seconda, not knowing that her parents were responsible for her suffering. She beats Augusto with a pillow and orders him to leave. As she spends more time in the facility, she gets bullied by some of the patients. At one point, a woman interrupts her quiet game of dominoes and starts fidgeting and flailing before her as if challenging her. Seconda rises up to the challenge and starts dancing the same way she did to relieve her anxiety. She loses herself in it as her coping mechanisms work the way they did before. This time, however, everyone dances with her, making her imagine lights and music around them. Once she has exerted all her anxiety away, a doctor asks if she wants actual music. Instead, Seconda asks to go home. On her way home, she passes by a small barn and spots her cat. She follows it inside a henhouse only to discover the scout sitting
getting there. Just then, another woman enters the hen house and calls the scout as Seconda, revealing that the kid she's been seeing is her younger self. As Seconda walks freely into the streets, she hides under her hoodie and quickens her pace. Soon, she finds herself in a field, pristine and free of her pains and anxiety. Suddenly, the younger Seconda collides with her and falls to the ground. Despite that, the kid tells her to do it again. With Seconda's mind now free, she's ready to face her past and eventually move on with life. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.